Well, he sounds like he's uh, contrite. Um, so did uh, Mr. Malvo. But we're starting to see that these uh, four alchemists were definitely not uh, attacked for no reason, apparently. They had been doing some rather fishy things. And we'll see more of that as we go along. It's two down, two to go, so I'm going to go ahead and save it here as the halfway point. Okay. The next place we're going to go to is actually um, the uh, Frigid River Branch Conservatory, which is where Sophia was. So we need to get Venus into our into the sunlight here. Let's see, I think it's a little bit more. Oops, uh, no, that's Jupiter. Uh, yeah. Ah, here we go. That should be it. So here is Venus right here, if you want to go back. And as you can see, this place is in the shadow, actually, of Flood Control Dam number three. Like most of the other places, it looks uh, maybe not uh, ruined, but at least for the most part abandoned. Uh, let's see, a music, music player here, that makes sense although we don't have a record for it. How many of you out there actually remember records? <laughs> I actually do, but just barely. Uh, my parents had them when I was very young. Okay, let's see. That's nice. like a guitar-like instrument there. That one was like a horn. This one kind of looks like an accordion. Sounds like one, too. This also has kind of a hornish sound, although it's higher pitch. Let's see about... oops. Anything else around here? No? Okay. Let's see the other side, shall we? Since this is a conservatory, it's pretty, I'm pretty not surprised that, you know, a lot of these puzzles are going to be music-based. That's an interesting sound. <laughs> Like a viola-ish kind of music there. It's like a clarinet. And this looks like a drum. Or a bongo. And sure enough, that's what it sounds like. Okay. Now we can pick all these up. Um, and from what I remember, I believe we need to organize those on the various chairs. 
but um, there's actually a clue that'll tell us how to do that later, so we'll just leave it for now. Ah, here we go. Okay. So this is the first part of the clue. Um, this is the sections of the orchestra. So it basically tells us which um, section should be where. So I'm just going to go ahead and s sketch this on my scrap paper really quick. Looks like there's eight sections. We have the violin. We know what that one looks like. But here we have some ones that are not so familiar, and we didn't know which instrument is which, because we don't have pictures here to show us. This is the Nambino. Uh, over here is the Miano. And down here is the Fleasel. Up here, the popper keg. That sounds like that might be the drum, but I'm not sure. We have the Frobophone. We have the Gendera Glini. And finally, we have the Wurtmizer. Okay, so I copied all that stuff down. Um, actually, I should be going left, so let's go up the stairs first. Yeah, because it's either up the stairs or over there on the side. So, up the stairs we have, of course, paintings on the walls. It's an opening here to look over, over the lower section there. Here's that same photograph we saw in the monastery, it's just here, it's in black and white. So those are all the students at the conservatory. And it just comes back down again. So, not much to see over there. Let's go this way. Loading. Here we go. <laughs> Every once in a while the emulator seems to have to chug a little bit. Okay, there's stairs over there. If you have a torn poster. Harmony of the Spheres. Okay. And of course, that's a picture of Alexandria. So I wonder if she actually did find out that magical music that was called the uh, Harmony of the Spheres or not. The boiler room is locked. You also notice in the background we're hearing the same uh, violin that uh, we encountered when we first saw the ghost of Alexandria at the very beginning of the game. Oh, wait a minute, this is where we came from. This is the practice room. Duh. Let's go out in the center here. Too late. We're closed. Sorry. Thanks for coming. Bye bye. Yeah, I had a feeling that this place would probably be closed. Apparently, there's some minimal staff here. And by the way, you can see here that that's the way that leads to the auditorium. On this side, we have. Um. This looks like a picture of the foundations of the conservatory being built. Another locked door. Zork Musical Academy for Girls. General Thaddeus Kane, Principal Founder. Interesting. So our general, for some reason, put up the funds to actually uh, create this whole conservatory. Although, I mean, given that he had a relationship with Sophia, it's possible that Sophia wanted to have this conservatory, and so he built it for her. We have a place for tickets to be exchanged, but it's empty currently. And this time, it looks like we actually can sit at the piano. Doesn't sound like a piano, though. Very electronic. Looks like we can play something here, but we don't have anything yet. The 
same photograph once again, and also we've seen this before as well of Alexandria with the violin. On Music and Perfection by R. Flood, Zoff Publishing. Ah, and so here we get it. We have the violin, the most soulful of the zorchestral instruments. I like the little Z there, because it's Zork, obviously. The Fiesel is a wind instrument with a medium pitch. Okay, so the Fiesel is the U kind of clarinet instrument. Oh, the drum is actually the Nambino, is an Antharian percussion instrument. So, let's see, Nambino is the drums. The popper keg is the small percussion instrument, so that's the really strange sounding one. But, as you can see, it does not give us the others yet. So we need to keep searching to find the others. So here we have the uh, some record records cases here. We have the charge of the Yipple Brigade. Uh, let's see, flat flatheadia overture for rack and pendulum. Oh, that must be nice to hear by Johann Sebastian Flathead. Um, harmonica hits for the home. Oh, jeez. That's gotta be fun. Yeah, only only ten bucks or ten Zorknids. Ah, here we go. Sophia Hamilton plays the blues, piano, love songs. That's interesting. I, I I'm wondering that if the piano might be her actual instrument of choice, while Alexandria's is the violin. Introduction to the Zorchestra. So that one we can take, and also we can take this one, the de uh, Alexandria's debut album. Here we have a tuning fork. And let's see, can we go? Yes, we can go over here. And nothing around the fireplace, but I'm sure there's something around the desk we can look at. On top is... Huh. Something needs to be placed here to actually turn on the light, I guess. All we have is... well, I don't think the tuning fork will do it. No. Whoops. Okay, well, let's look in the drawer. Augur 14th, 935. Sophia. It is raining and grim here. The fields are muddy and littered with corpses. I am tired of all this. All I want in the world is to return to my castle. The battle at Flood Control Dam number 678 was more brutal than I expected. Elrond, backed by the Enchanters, has, has discovered some magical scroll which causes weapons to turn to fudge. <laughs> it is disheartening and sticky. Liz wrote that she is considering spending the fall of her, of her mother's villa... Oh, at. I'm sorry. Liz wrote that she is considering spending the fall at her mother's villa in Antharia. Say the word, and I will further convince her to make the retreat to the restorative island, island climb. For her health, you know, and for mine, Kane. Uh, Ian II, 943. Sophia, you say I seem wrathful. I, that and far beyond. I am close to giving up on my son. Lately, Lucian has become suspicious, nearly paranoid. Searching my room, pilfering my private papers. Say that three times fast. And I am at a loss. He is in love with that girl, your precious prodigy. I know, and nothing I say will stop him. You say to be forceful, and I try, but he is my only son. It is hard for me to deny him that which he wants most. So, what then? K. Okay. Uh, Mumbember, 14th, 940-S. And so the holidays pass, and still we are nowhere near each other. Liz and I are fighting again, which does dampen the festivities somewhat. 
It's not that she questions my formal loyalties to her and my family. She knows I will never leave her. But I suppose I can hardly blame her if she feels my heart is no better than, is no better than any. How I hate to discuss these matters. As if I were a gossiping girl. I live where I live, and I love whom I love. Praise Yorick. That is all there is to say on the subject. K. Madam Hamilton, I have re refilled... I have refiled your black gauze lamp. I also took the liberty of cleaning your lamp key slot. You should keep your key in your slot, madam, because there was all kinds of dust and dirt in there, and that no good. That'll be a Zorkmid for this week and one for last, if you don't don't mind. You were playing real nice today. Keep practicing. Sincerely, Brog. <laughs> uh. um, and also, again, in the sequel, you will meet Brog, actually. And, yeah, he sounds pretty much the way that he's writing or typing here. Actually, I, I was surprised that he could type at all. All right. So uh, the general was seemed bound by honor, so he refused to actually officially leave his wife. Although, I guess the actual relationship between him and his wife was, for all intents and purposes, over, and the marriage was just formality. October fifteenth, nine thirty-seven. Dear Sophia, the time has come. I think you will be proud of me when you see her. She is a charming, brilliant child, and I have grown to care for little Alexandria as if her parenting were my only office. Her music is unschooled, but I hear in it, somewhere, the harmony of the spheres. It is there for you to distill. I expect much work and great things from both of you. Fondly, Malvo. Arch 2nd, 944. Dearest Madam, I have much unsettling news. It has come to my attention that Lucian Kane, with his troubled, rebellious spirit and his strange disposition, have been bothering Alexandria, under your own roof, madam. I fear she knows little of the ways of men, who are not monks, that is. Please, you should know better than I. Alexandria needs to study and perfect her art. Father Malvo. February 12, 924. Dear Sophia, Dr. Sartorius is a brilliant man. This experiment will be the biggest breakthrough since the beginning of Zork. If you are still interested, make your way to the Temple of Agrippa. But take great care, and do not speak of it. There are those who misunderstand alchemy, those who would kill for our secrets, and uh, secrets in their search for gold. Father Malvo. Oh, great, we get to read Sartorius's handwriting again. Seven Oracle. Dear Sophia, I have had some success supersaturating liquids in the generation of large crystals. It appears small crystals are ideal seeds for growth. I feel this continuation of water, or I'm sorry, this combination of water and earth, heated with fire and burning with air, will provide fertile new avenues for our venture. Sartorius. Second, 22nd Maj. Sophia, your concerns about the purity of my crystal generation is well-founded. I think I have the solution. It involves dissolving of white calcium bromide, which has the added benefit of settling my acid indigestion while I'm in the lab. Sartorius. Well, that's convenient. Okay. And that's it. Let's go around this way. I think, can we? I guess not. Never mind. Go this way. Now I believe we can fit that tuning fork over here. Yes. There we go. Yep, 
I think I did hear a click too, so... Let's see what that did, if it did anything. Did that do something? Maybe I just missed it. I need to find that switch. Ah, yes, okay. Yep, there it is. Um, so I really got lucky on that one. <laughs> Usually I have to, to I have to hunt for that particular note at some point. But, uh, yep, it's all good. So let's put the key here. Now we can turn on the light, I think. Or can we? Good. Um, there we go. Okay, that was a bit odd. Okay. So it says here, prepare the boiling solution. Followed by seed with crystal. Purify the crystal. And then ring the notes together. So I'll just sketch down those four capitalized words here. Is that, is that right? Yep. No, uh, maybe not quite exactly. This might actually be the sh that sheet music to the to the notes that she's playing. Although I'm not sure what part of it those might be. Alright, let's head upstairs, I think. Because, yeah, we tried that door, and Lady won't let us through that door. <laughs> Let's say how to get up the stairs. Alright, left first. And we have a locked door. Keep going around. Nothing here. However, we can go in here. And this probably is Sophia's room. I would guess. Some stuff here. Okay. November 20th, 924. Sophia. Uh, Dr. Sartorius is a strange but fascinating man. As you know, I am not prone to dabbling into strange self-indulgent self philosophies or womanish New Age experiments, but there is something to the man of that there can be no doubt. And I still wonder, might the doctor's way be the only way of securing power in this perpetually unstable world? I could have great use for him, and his philosopher's stone, in my campaign against the enchanters. I cannot hold them back much longer. Say nothing. I will write you of this further. Cain. Okay, Madam Sophia, you are right. We cannot wait any longer. We must take a risk. Meet me at the Temple of Agrippa. I will summon the others. What has begun must take its course. It is our only chance before we are destroyed. Sartorius. Dear Madam Sophia, While we have never been formally introduced, I feel as if I've known you for years now. At least, I know many things about you. I know you sleep with my husband. I know you're only one of his many mistresses. Or did you think that he loved only you? Has he been teasing you with talk of your future, of marriage? Did you imagine he would leave me for you, and you would rule Iron Dune as the next Lady Kane? Let me assure you, madam, that you have no future with my husband. He needs, 
He needs me, my family, and our lovely money. Without me, there is no Iron Dune, and there is nothing, and no one he loves more than that. Elizabeth Kane. So, it seems that perhaps, uh, General Kane actually married into the family that gave him Iron Dune. In which case, sure enough, that would explain why he wasn't going to leave her. I thought perhaps it was because of his honor, but maybe it's just because he wants money. And, uh, and power. Ah, so behind here is a bathtub. With a big S in it for Sophia, I guess. Y yeah, I'm thinking she's a little vain. I'll have him not. I'll have him. I'll have him not. You're making me wild. As wild. As your two young mistresses. Mm. <laughs> Only two. <laughs> I have eyes everywhere. I know all your games. I should beat you for your impudence. <laughs> I should beat you for your faithlessness. <laughs> but I don't care. Because you and I are going to be together forever. And when your mistresses are old and lust is just a dim memory, and all they care about is finding food soft enough for their toothless gums. We'll still be just like this. Just like this. Well, that's pretty much spells out their plan for the use of the Philosopher's Stone, was uh, not only immortality, but infinite youth, or eternal youth, I guess. Another book on alchemy, Thoughts from Al Razorki. Oh wow, look at that. All the notes on the piano there with various uh, writings about little labels. Okay, it says that the whole of astrology is an art musical which reflecteth the operations and effects of the musical note, the pure sound, the subtle light, the secret influence of the harmony of the spheres and planets dwells in every element. Of all the music of the spheres, this is the greatest. Only the one harmony of the spheres that has power to hold and fix the celestial influences, to keep them from recoiling back into their divine, inanimate spheres. In this simple way, the nature is the mastery... This simple way of nature is the mastery is to be atta attained. Yeah, attained. Boy, it's, that's written really weird. But what is the harmony, and how is it to be discovered? There is in music a certain melody, a singular array of notes, which, when played with a pure hand, applies itself to matter. By this art may the one spirit be united to the universal and cause a chain of perfect effect and proportion. For the magical properties of the music of the spheres draws entirely from the perfection of music all proportions. From musical proportions. Ugh, it's that funky spelling again. The string of the instrument is the limpid spirit of man, extending from the implementers to the earth and partaking of both extremes. Musical notes that lie along the string, along this string note, the stages of the spirit as it descends into the corpus and climbs back to the implementers after death. If this scale is played in the order true and destined, the limpid string passes through terra, aqua, air, ignis, and their corresponding notes, C, D, E, and B. The order of the elements is the order of those notes along the string, the harmony of the spheres. 
when the musician hears the harmony of the spheres, and then it goes on. So that might be something to keep in mind here, the corresponding notes. So we have C, D, E, and B corresponds to, looks like, earth, water, air, and fire. So we'll keep that in mind. Let's see, looks like I got some mathematical stuff over here. Man, this looks complicated. <laughs> all right. Well, we may. We'll see if that's all we need, or if we need to come back to that later. Okay. Picture of some moonlit landscape. But nothing else of interest. Doesn't look like. So let's make our way back. I think we should go this way. Ah, here we go. This looks like a bunk area. There's many, many beds here, so this is probably where the students were. And the sofa here is preventing us from going that way. So we'll just go this way. Nothing, nothing. Hear that mu that song playing in the background. We'll be hearing that again pretty soon. Okay. Given the extra stuff here, I'm going to assume that this is Alexandria's bed. We have a loose board. Ah, secret notes. December 12th, 944. Alexandria. There was something going on with my father. I thought it was something to do with Thadium and his battles with Elrond. Now I suspect that it is far more dangerous than that. He says little of his latest invention, only that it involves pure lead. And it is very dangerous. My father would not harm us, but I fear he cannot save us either. You once said that you, you wanted to explore the Empire, voyage across the Great Sea. Come with me. Lucien. Suspender first. Suspender? No, oh, that's weird. <laughs> Suspenders! The first, 944. My dear girl, please do not please do not be upset. Madame Sophia wants only the best for you. You will always be my child, my only family. But you must always remember that you are one of those people for whom life has chosen a special destiny. We all believe in your magical talent. Be pure of heart and spirit, and I shall always be your loving father. Alexandria. My father wants me to join his army in their fight against the Enchanter's Guild and Alron. He's been our nemesis for so long, I feel I know him intimately. Magic, power, and politics. When did they get so complicated and corrupt? Oh, poor and naive Lucien. I like, I like that the, we have the word here, nemesis, here. Right now it's applied to Elrond. My father says he fights in the name of honor and truth. No truth I know of. Medicine, education, law, and religion. They mean nothing to me. My only truth is you and your music. Lucien. Okay. Let's see, anything else? Nah, it's just the notes. Okay. We can only look down there. We have a music box, maybe? Yep. That seems to be it. We have a mirror. Magical. Please, don't throw away that power. 
I want to make my own mistakes. It's not worth it. Let him wait. So my guess is, is that when Sophia found out that she and Lucien were planning to leave together, she informed his father, or Lucien's father, and maybe Alexandria's as well, and together they basically stopped them from going. Alright, path to musical perfection. Seems like a, uh, kind of a theme here as far as music goes. Okay, this is shadowed, so this is going to be kind of tricky, but let's see if I can read this. Whole dispositions, virtues, and natural motions depend on the activity of the heavens and the harmony of the heavenly spheres. These harmonies link the visible with the invisible, causing the superior spiritual essences to descend and converse with the low lower corporeal flesh. When this occurs, all of nature grows in turn strangely exalted bearing, for one brief moment, the stamp of heavenly impression. In this one moment, we do see the elements of the world, terror, air, aqua, ignis, quicken with animus, with life, with being. The stellar harmonies, the music of the cosmos, can be found in the simplest of melody and chord, if the order of the notes reflects the true order of the spheres, both fixed and mutable. If the true order is made known, and the harmony of the spheres is played with a hand both pure and worthy, the planacia, elixir of life, and one quintessence, will appear and great work will make of itself manifest. Of this greatness there can be no doubt. He that has once the flower of the sun, the perfect ruby, which he calls elixir, not only can do that, but by its virtue can uh, can confer honor, can confer honor, love, respect, long life, give safety, valor, yea, and victory to whom he will. In eight and twenty days, I'll make an old man, old fourscore, a fourscore, a child. So the ideas of wealth, honor, love, respect, youth, and victory, and, uh, and probably apply, uh, appeals to all four of the alchemists in one way or another. The musings of the power of melody. We have a note here, Alexandria. The path to purification is through the magic of the notes. Love, Sophia. Okay, just these two pages here. It says, As nature worketh joyously in this manner, so much more joyously when the music is joined with nature. For music prepareth the soul for nature, and prepareth the soul for the end of nature. For in the soul are these five notes, and in these five notes wilt thou findeth soul of the world. In the soul of the world is the one soul of all things, mysterium magnum, endless question and quest come to rest. So lies the great something, I, it's just too dark for me to read it, of our philosophy, the one perfection, more natural than nature, more virtuous than virtue, and more pure than purity. The one stone of the five, the Quintessia, the way of the wise, passes through the twin temples of nature and music in her glory and works. Five notes. In all of music there are but five notes of consequence. Possess these five notes, and thou wilt possess the Gloria Mundi. The darkness of all flesh will, f will flee from thee. Everyone's singing the praise of this fifth element, I'm telling you. Here we have kind of a portfolio. Alexandria Wolf, Music for the Moon. Okay, must be another one of her performances. I think that's all we can do here. Yep. Ah, okay, there we go. Um. Yep. Okay. So let's head back downstairs. I can 
go around this way. Yes. And we will try these records that we got in Sophia's office. And that is over here. Side and here. Okay. First, let's do Alexandria's music. Just for kicks. Oops. Got a wind up. For the final performance of the evening, it gives me great pleasure to present to you, in her debut performance, the newest and most gifted prodigy of my conservatory, Alexandria Wolfe. Alexandria, that was lovely. But, as we all know, no concert is complete without the standard Zockian conclusory fanfare. Hit it, boys! <laughs> Volunteers at the booth. Thanks again. Okay, so that's the end of that one. And uh, this actually does have a clue in it in the um, fanfare. You need to remember the order and which instruments were actually played. All right. Now let's do the introduction to the orchestra here. Oops, sorry, got my again. Since 732 GUE, the Frobos Philharmonic Orchestra has consisted of nine instrumental sections that align to form a crescent moon shape, filling half of the Zorchestral Amphitheater. The violin, the most soulful of the orchestral instruments, sounds a rich, plaintive melody when the bow draws across its fine platypus gut strings. Lesser strings are made from hungus gut, which, though economical, has a pungent scent which many find distracting. The nambino is an antherian percussion instrument that draws its design from the steel shipyard drums of the port of Marba. Its thundering notes amplify as they resonate through the four apertures or nams of the drum casing, creating a droning overtone. The Miano is a type of Acadian lyre that has sometimes been employed by conjurers for use in musical incantations, or alternately for line dancing at guild socials. When plucked with a Miano stick, the lyre sounds rich, deep notes, usually in a minor key.
The fleasel is a wind instrument with a delicate high pitch that fluctuates as air is pushed past its reed to a series of brass fleasel valves. A long-time court favourite of Lord Dimwit Flathead's, the fleasel was once sounded 300 times in a single meal at Flatheadia Castle, where it announced the arrival of the 299 next courses. The Wurtmeter is a two-player folk instrument which requires one player to play the keys and another to pump the bellows, thus producing a disjointed harmonic blast, a Wurtmeter or worst marriage. Originating in the rural divides of the frigid river valley, this unsophisticated, unwieldy instrument is the least respected member of the orchestra. The ancient Gedereglini horn sounds its strange hollow timbre as two players blow from either end at once, varying pitch as they cover and uncover the horn's many apertures. The Gedereglini is sometimes referred to as the lover's horn and is ceremoniously played at most Zork weddings. The Frobophone, first introduced as accompaniment to the Borfi Metropolitan Opera, is a deep, twisted-sounding horn which plays off the high-pitched fleasel in most orchestral movements. It should not be confused with the Homer Frobophone, which is not played at all, but used instead to beat upon flatheads in an attempt to broaden their minds. The Popper Keg is a small percussion instrument which emits a thumping sound when slapped with a hand. As the keg clasp is moved rhythmically back and forth along its tubular body, the popper keg's pitch raises and lowers. The popper keg is popular among the very young and those who refuse the commitment of a two-player instrument. Most orchestras employ four of each of these eight instruments. Their proper placement within the Zork orchestral layout is critical to the success of the concert. The four other instruments of Zork, the verni, the umba, the bass chocophone and the piano, are not considered part of the Frobos Philharmonic Orchestra. However, these instruments are popular within the Empire's alternative music scene, which includes such groups as The Cruel Puppets, Gru in Chains, Cursed Day, and Sound Dungeon. Okay, so that gives us the added clues about which um, instruments are called what. 